Welcome to Next Generation Robotics, robots that can feel and even remember sensations. This is part of a really important area of robotics that seeks to give robots sensation like pain and touch that can match human skin. We'll talk about it. For animals, you might be startled by, say, the sound of a vacuum cleaner when you're a baby, but you just get used to it. So how can we tell a robot that something is harmful or just normal? Well, you habituate it and use a memorister. Memoristers act very much like our own neurons. They remember the charge that passes through them, and that can be reinforced. Some of the issues with that is that you have to decide on how many states you can give it, and researchers have been giving them more states, so different kinds of metals can interact with each other and remember what happened. This involves giving the robot different layers of skin that react differently to the environment, and that's not all that different to how our skin works. And it worked. When they were habituated to being, say, poked with a pen, it wouldn't react around 71% of the time. It would only fail to react to, say, an electric shock 0.02% of the time, which is very efficient. This is important because it can help a robot avoid harm, but it's also valuable in other areas. Say search and rescue. This principle could allow robots to differentiate between falling rocks versus somebody shouting for help with more efficiency and faster. Robots are pretty bad at being able to separate out the kind of sounds, but they are getting better. AI is an option to help filter, but it still takes time to do the processing, so having something that can react on the, I'm gonna say cellular level for lack of a better term, this surface level is really efficient. Now, teaching robots about pain is only part of the problem. We need to teach it to appropriately react to pain. This is part of a really bizarre area of science in which people are trying to get robots to experience mirror neurons. So experience the concept of pain when they see somebody in pain. And with neuromorphic computers, you can actually model pain and teach robots to avoid it. This is intended to give robots morality should help robots get a little bit beyond the three tenets of robotics, so don't harm a person, follow orders unless that interferes with law one, and preserve the self unless that interferes with law one or two. But I think the whole point of Asimov is that it wasn't enough, so let's give robots empathy. Something that people, you know, don't experience always. But wait, there's more. How do we give robots a sensation that they can react to at the same speed as a human? Because the processor does take time, you need to have something on the surface, and graphene has been really valuable. It needs to be able to create an electrical current when a stimuli hits it. With memoristers, you can remember things and remember the kind of stimuli you're seeing and become habituated to it, and that can go both ways. You can react faster to harmful stimuli once you've gotten used to it, and that is going to be on the surface level for tissue, quite literally. Graphene is highly conductive and can react to things like temperature, pH, pressure, humidity. It could actually let exosuits, like say the kinds that astronauts wear, feel the environment and just channel it back into your own skin and nervous system. Graphene is also capable of self-organization, so it doesn't have to be super hot or super cold. It can have these nice little lattice formations, and if you break it, it can just come right back into place, making it an ideal material. Don't get struck by lightning, but that is also true of just your body. It can also be flexible and elastic, meaning it's also an ideal candidate for biohybrids, wetware. You know, that thing that I love to talk about where you grow human cells and turn human components into robots, like skin and tissues, like muscle, and the tiny human brains, which I, I find them fascinating and they're probably unethical, but this, this is the perfect thing to interface with them. I am going to make a prediction. I think for some of the artificial neurons that we're making that could even interface with our own, why not just turn that into a robot's nervous system? Why not graft it together into what is essentially what makes up our nervous system? And then, and then graft it into a brain. I bet you good money someone will eventually figure this out before humans wipe themselves off the planet. To be fair, I can't really lose that bet because who would know?